tonight is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning L.I. News Team. Good evening. I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. Police are wrapping up the intensive search for human remains along Long Island's South Shore as the investigation continues into a possible serial killer. And police officials say they are reserving the option to return to the Ocean Parkway area as they continue investigating the discovery of up to 10 sets of human remains. Officers found what they say they suspect are human remains in two separate locations near Jones Beach yesterday. And today, at least one of those sets of remains was determined to be human. That discovery comes after Suffolk County Police uncovered eight sets of human remains since December along the same highway. Authorities suspect a serial killer may be responsible, but they have not named any suspects. Well, New York City will be the new home of one of NASA's retiring space shuttles. It was announced today that Space Shuttle Enterprise will go to the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum. Enterprise has been on display at the Smithsonian in Washington, but NASA plans to send shuttle discovery to the Smithsonian once the shuttle program ends this summer. 21 museums and centers around the country put in bids for the other two retiring spaceships. Also announced today, Atlantis will be going to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Center, and Endeavor will be going to the California Science Center in Los Angeles. Today's announcements come on the 30th anniversary of the first space shuttle flight. Four Long Island women are charged with using a 14-day-old baby in a carriage as a hiding place to steal thousands of dollars worth of clothes. Police say the women were in the J.C. Penney's store in East Garden City last night. They took merchandise off the racks and placed it on the baby carriage. Then they took the carriage into a fitting room and hid the merchandise in the carriage with the newborn baby, then left the store without paying. The women are identified as 19-year-old Jessica Stanley of Great Neck, 19-year-old Caswell Jenkins of Manhasset, 18-year-old Denise Irby of West Hempstead, and 18-year-old Brittany Goins of Great Neck. The store says the merchandise was valued at over $2,300. Last month, a Long Island emergency medical technician was shot in the back as he responded to motor vehicle accident. He's recovering from his wound, and as Tara Evans reports, the emergency worker was recently honored by Nassau County for his dedication and bravery. Bravery, courage, and sacrifice are just three words that describe Justin Angel. For that dedication, all of Nassau County is eternally grateful. And those three words are the reason why Nassau County Executive Edward Mangano recently presented Belmore Volunteer Firefighter and EMT Justin Angel with the Nassau so, County Valor Award home, in Mineola. Angel was shot and wounded in Belmore earlier this month while responding to a car accident. Each and every day our volunteer firefighters and EMT personnel wake up and respond to emergencies with a single goal in mind saving lives. However, I don't know that they were ever trained to dodge bullets while rendering assistance, but that's exactly what Justin Angel did. But Angel says he doesn't think he was the real hero on the day of the shooting. My own brother was actually the one who was driving the ambulance, and I think him and the other person who helped me are definitely heroes because they got me safe to the hospital and protected me from any other further harm. So they're definitely uh, heroes. Now, besides being a volunteer firefighter and EMT with the Belmore Fire Department, Angel's also a full-time EMT with the Brentwood Legion Ambulance. And he says he can't wait to get out of the spotlight and back to work. It's going to take time for the wound to actually heal before I can start doing any work or lifting or anything strenuous like that. Just lucky I'm all right and I uh, can't wait to get back. Angel says the shooting was a freak occurrence and things like that don't usually happen on the job. So he says he's not afraid to get back out there. Uh, it's 
pretty crazy how it worked out. Nobody else got hurt, and I'm still I'm right here standing. Justin, congratulations. Thank you. And that In is Mineola, Tara Evans, LI News Tonight. And that shooting happened last month. With gas prices soaring and Earth Day just around the corner, Kelly Blue Book is out with its top 10 green cars for this year. Among those it considers the most environmentally friendly cars on the market this year are 2012's Ford Focus, the Fiat 500, and the all-electric Nissan LEAF. Kelly Blue Book says you can't talk about top green cars without mentioning the Toyota Prius, still described as a mileage champ. Driving pleasure and a good ownership experience were considered in the list, along with superior fuel economy. And they say there's still a lot to be said for the traditional internal combustion engine, which have gotten so efficient that 40 is the new 30 in miles per gallon. No more pencils, no more books. At least in one Long Island school district where Kindles are being used to teach students who are learning English as a second language. And as Adrian Harrow reports, students are excited about using the e-book readers instead of textbooks. This is a high school classroom, but that's not a textbook. It's a Kindle. Select English language students at Freeport High School were recently introduced to the technology of reading and learning from a portable electronic book, better known as a Kindle. This particular class is one of only two classes at the school that are getting the opportunity to use Kindles as part of a classroom experiment. English teacher Andrea Kane says she personally pushed for the grant to buy the Kindles because she says it can help improve students' comprehension skills and test scores. I really believe this is going to make a difference. Um, if I didn't, I don't think I would have worked so hard on this grant. But I think we're going to see improvement, both on the state assessments and with their classroom performance. So I'm counting on an improvement. The Kindle uses a wireless connection to enable its users to download and read ebooks, newspapers, magazines, blogs, and other digital media. But what is it about this technology that makes it better than a textbook? We asked students about the Kindle and how it may help them. I feel great because you have a dictionary here. If you don't want to read, you have like a voice and read for you and all of that. Well, I think this is, the Kindle is a very useful, and I'm pretty, I'm really happy because we're one of the few classes that we're using it, and I think I like it. <laughs> the outcome of the Kindle experiment is yet to be determined. But according to Kane, just the idea of using them shows progress. Well, listen, anything that keeps them from having to touch a paper book, they're, <laughs> they're happy with. And they love technology. So if you incorporate you know, the two, I think we'll, we're going to come out as a win. The few classes here at Freeport High School were fortunate enough to receive the funding for the Kindles. But will future students be able to receive the same privilege? Kane says that might be an issue. Funding is always an issue. <laughs> So I don't know, but uh, I'm kind of hoping that the grant goes on for a few years, so I'm hoping that we can use the money that we get from the grant to buy more and implement it in other subject areas besides English. In Freeport, Adrian Hara, LI News Tonight. It was a down day on Wall Street today. The Dow finished the day down 117 and a third points. NASDAQ was down 26 and three quarters points, and the S&P was down almost 10 and a quarter points. NYIT's LI News Tonight continues after this. Finance counselors will be available to talk about ways to get out of debt at Brookhaven Office of Women's Service in Farmingville on Tuesday, April 19th. To register, call 631-698-2074. Paint your own Russian nesting dolls at Brentwood Public Library on Tuesday, April 19th at 11 a.m. For more information, call 631-273-7883. See a screening of the film Platoon at New York Institute of Technology's D. Sibersky Center in Old Westbury on Wednesday, April 20th at 5.30 p.m. 
them. For more information, call 516-686-7567 or take the kids to learn about fly fishing at a clinic for junior anglers at Caleb Smith State Park Preserve in Smithtown on Saturday, April 23rd from 8.30 a.m. till 4 p.m. For more information, call 631-265-1054. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, send it to Tonight at nyit.edu. Press play to start your future. Learn the industry. Use the technology. Become an expert in television reporting. Journalism. Radio. Digital film. Public relations and advertising. Television production, digital graphics, a beautiful state-of-the-art campus, a road to the job you've always wanted, in the media capital of the world. Communication Arts at NYIT. When can you start? In news headlines around the world today, Japan is now acknowledging what had already been widely understood, that the crisis at a damaged nuclear plant is the second worst in history. But it's reported today's decision by Japanese officials to give it the highest possible ranking on an international scale, the same ranking that was given the Chernobyl accident in 1986, doesn't signal a worsening of the plant's status or any additional health dangers. And Japan's prime minister is telling his people not to panic. On national TV today, the prime minister said the situation at the plant is stabilizing step by step, and the amount of radiation leaks is on the decline. But he said it's too soon to let our guard down. Well, authorities say several people have been detained in connection with a subway bombing that left 12 people dead and more than 200 wounded. The interior minister says a radio-controlled bomb apparently was placed under a bench at a busy subway station yesterday. He says police have created composite pictures of two male suspects <clears throat> excuse me, using testimony from witnesses. Another official says several people have been detained in that investigation. It's not clear if those people are considered suspects. Earlier, a domestic security agent in that former Soviet nation said it had identified the likely attacker. And the French prime minister says his country's military forces that have been in Ivory Coast since 2002 have no reason to stay now that democracy is going to be installed in the West African country. The French prime minister says the roughly 1,700 French troops in Ivory Coast should leave as soon as security is sufficient following the capture of longtime strongman Laurent Gbagbo. The French prime minister was speaking today after the Ivory Coast government said France would scale back its military force and give about $580 million in aid to restore public services. Bagbo was pulled from his burning residence yesterday by troops of the man elected president last year, who had the backing of the French forces. Well, we had a cloudy day today with some periods of scattered light rain. The high today was up in the low 60s. Tonight, a mix of rain and wind with a low in the mid 40s. Tomorrow, chance of showers with a high in the mid 50s. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high in the low 60s. Friday, partly cloudy with a high in the upper 50s. And the outlook for Saturday, a chance of rain and thunder with a high up around 50 degrees. And that's it for NYIT's LI News Tonight. I'm Ken Eckhart. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.